In a previous video, we spoke about the marginal rate of substitution as the negative of the slope of the isoprofit curve. Having done that, though, that only told us the trade-offs that the owners of the firm were willing to make in terms of trying to increase their output, but then having to trade off some of the price by lowering the price in order to sell more output. So now what we're going to have to think about is um, what the opportunity costs of the firm are, given its constraints, and therefore what we will do when we set the marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal rate of transformation of the firm. And so what we're going to see here is what the firm does for its profit maximization when it sets MRS equal to MRT. Okay, so like we did with people like Keiko and Harriet um, in earlier chapters, we need to understand the objectives of the owners of the firm. So we did that by thinking through the ISO profits of the firm. So these objectives tell us the trade-offs that the owners of the firm are willing to make in maximizing their profits. But in terms of thinking about the maximization of profits, um, we also have to know the constraints on the owners of the firm. So in terms of the constraints, we have to think about what limits the price and quantity combinations that the owners of the firm can choose in terms of trying to sell more output and um, charge high prices to consumers. So we then have to think through what the opportunity costs are that the owners face when trying to make their decision about what is best for them when trying to sell as much as they can at as high a price as they feasibly can. So as before, what are we going to do? We're going to end up at a point where we set the marginal rate of substitution equal to the marginal rate of transformation um, to find our constrained profit maximum. All right, so what do we have here? Here we have the firm's um, um, inverse demand function. We have price, P, as a function of output, X, and that's equal to the maximum willingness to pay, P bar, minus the slope of the demand curve multiplied by output. Okay. Now what we can see here is that the demand curve for, firm, for a firm's products determines the feasible combinations of prices, P, and quantities, X, the owners of the firms can choose in their maximization problem. So what we can see here is that in the green area over here, we have feasible combinations of price and quantities that the firm can choose given the demand curve that it's constrained by given by consumers' preferences. Now, the negative of the slope of the demand curve is the opportunity cost of producing more output in terms of the price charged for gone. So what does that mean? It means that in order to sell more output, the firms have to sacrifice some amount of the price to do so. Because of our preferences as consumers, they can't just charge us an incredibly high price and sell a high quantity. So what we can see here is imagine a point like this one over here, and I'll call that point K. Point K is lots of output sold at a high price. Now the question is, is that feasible? No, it's not. It's in this infeasible region. Right? It's outside the demand curve. Because it's outside the demand curve, um, it's not a combination of price and quantity that the firm can choose. But what we can see is that um, there are other points here, F, sorry, G and H, that we'll speak about in a moment. But remember, along the demand curve, we can think about the opportunity cost um, for the firm. And in terms of the opportunity cost for the firm, we can see that in order to sell more output, they're going to have to lower their price. You've got to charge a lower price to sell more output. So um, we know that the demand curve for the firm is given by the following equation. So that's Px equal to P bar minus beta x. And we know that the negative of the slope of the demand curve um, so that slope is minus beta, and the negative of that equal to beta is the MRT of selling a lot at a low price to sell versus selling a little at a high price. Okay, so if we take beta um, as the marginal rate of transformation, that's basically the opportunity cost in terms of trying to sell more output. You've got to lower your price by some amount, beta, in order to sell an additional unit of the good X. So that is telling us, therefore, the feasible and infeasible combinations of price and quantity when we're either on the demand curve, um, inside in the feasible region as well, or outside of that demand curve and in the infeasible region. So points G and H are feasible then, but which of those two points will the firm choose? So consider point G and consider point H. If you are the owners of the firm, which of those two firms will you, the two 
points will you prefer? Um, so we don't yet have the firm's ISO profit curves, which would tell us their preferences. But if we're just comparing those two points and we think of the objectives of the firm, which is to maximize profits, we know that if they're comparing points G and H, both of which are feasible, what can we see? At point H, the firm is able to sell more output at a um, higher price. So if the firm is trying to maximize its profits, it will prefer point H to point G. Okay, so um, that's exactly what we said here. Point H represents a larger output sold at a higher price. So the firm will not choose G, they will choose H. Okay, so now what have we done? We've taken that um, demand curve as we had previously. And just to remind you, the equation for that is PX equal to P bar minus beta X. And then we have the three isoprofit curves that we have here. And then we can compare those isoprofit curves as pi 1, pi 2, and pi 3. Remember that a lower subscript indicates a lower level of profit. So the profit for pi 3 is greater than the profit for pi 2 is greater than the profit for pi 1. Okay, so the owners of the firm can choose any of the feasible points on the demand curve. So you can choose E, H, or F. Now, if we're comparing point E with point H and with point F, what can we see? The owner is going to compare the slope of the isoprofit curve with the slope of the demand curve. So over here with point E, we can see that the marginal rate of substitution, which you recall is the negative of the slope of the isoprofit curve, is greater than the slope of the um, demand curve in terms of its opportunity costs. So at point E, the firm is willing to sacrifice some of the price in order to sell um, a, a larger output. So it's willing to do that. Um, so therefore, because MRS is not equal to MRT at point E, the firm is going to want to increase its, its output in order to make um, greater profits. Now we can contrast that with what happens at point F. At point F, the marginal rate of substitution from the firm's isoprofit curves um, versus the marginal rate of transformation from the um, demand curve, the MRS is lower than the MRT. So that means the firm is not willing to um, lower the price to sell more output, but the opportunity cost is quite substantial from doing so. So in fact, it would like to reduce its output in order to make greater profits. It can lower its output, charge a higher price, and thereby make a greater profit. So what we can see there is looking at points E, F, and H, um, we can see that the firm is not going to choose point E, it's not going to choose point F, but it is in fact going to choose point H. Sorry, point H, yes. So what happens at point H? At point H, what we can find is that MRS equals MRT. So let's unpack that for a second. So... We've already spoken about points E and F. At point H, on the other hand, the slope of the isoprofit curve, so the slope from the isoprofit curve, so notice here it's changing, but then it hits a point over here, H, where it is equal to the slope of the demand curve. So the isoprofit curve is tangent to the demand curve at point H. Therefore, at that point, what do we see? The MRS, the marginal rate of substitution, or the firm's willingness to pay in lowering its price to sell more output, is equal to the MRT, the opportunity cost for the firm in terms of the slope of the demand curve, telling us um, how much um, of its price it must sacrifice in order to sell more output. So remember the demand curve is the constraint, therefore giving us the, the opportunity cost. And the isoprofit curve is telling us something from the objectives, therefore giving us the marginal rate of substitution or the trade-off that the firm is willing to make. So what we see there is that the firm's willingness to pay is equal to the opportunity cost or MRS equals MRT. At that point, the firm is maximizing its profits. So um, when we think through this, and we think about the slope of the isoprofit curve equal to the slope of the demand curve, we remember that the marginal rate of substitution, um, and I can see that that's in the incorrect order, MRS XP, um, so just re let's rewrite that, equals MRS XP, so remember X variable, Y variable, is equal to P minus C all over X. 
So with respect to that, we've got the willingness to pay that the firm has, MRSXP equal to P minus C over X. Now, we know that the modular rate of transformation is equal to minus DPDX of the, um, uh, the demand curve. And just as a reminder, the demand curve was PX equal to P bar minus beta X. So if we take the first derivative of that with respect to X and then find its negative, we see that the MRT is equal to beta. So when we set the MRS equal to MRT, what are we going to find? We're going to see that P minus C um, equals X. Why? We've got the MRS equal to P minus C over X equal to beta equal to the MRT. Okay, so we have this, but then what's the next step? Where are we going with this? Well, we need to be able to find an equation that we can substitute back into our constraint. Remember, the constraint is this thing over here, the demand curve. The demand curve is our constraint. So what can we feasibly find here? We can look at this and we can see we've got P and we've got X. We can isolate P. So let's think about what we have to do that. Um, we're going to isolate P and then we're going to substitute that back into the constraint. So let's isolate P. Um, first through, we're going to multiply through by X. Okay, so we do that when we get P minus C equals beta X. Then what's the next thing to do? We have to take this minus C and we've got to add it to both sides. So add C. What is that going to leave us with? We're going to leave us with P equals beta X plus C. Now remember, with our demand curve, which is a constraint, we've got P equals P bar minus beta X. So we can substitute P in over here. Okay, so we can just substitute that in over there. Now, what does that leave us with? That leaves us with beta X plus C equals P bar minus beta X. Now, what do we want to do? We want to find X. That's what we want to do. And so what can we do here? We're going to collect our terms. We're going to collect our terms, and that means adding beta X to both sides. So that leaves us with two beta X, and then we're going to subtract C from both sides. Now, what do we have to do? We divide through by two beta. If we do that, that leaves us with X equal to P bar minus C all over two beta. That is the firm's profit maximizing quantity. We could substitute that back into the previous equation to find the firm's um, profit maximizing price as well. So if we substituted this in over here for our equation for P, that would give us the firm's profit maximizing price. So when the firm sets MRS equal to MRT, it finds an equation of the one variable in terms of the other, and then it substitutes that back into the constraint, which is the demand curve. Having done so, that permits the firm to find its profit maximizing price quantity combination. And that is exactly the output and price combination at point H. <coughs> <coughs>